In our last video, we went over everything you need to know about using the browser, whether it's the media browser, the expansion browser, or the file browser. Now, you wanna make a drum kit. I'm gonna start making a kit right now, and we're gonna make one that's pretty basic at first, and then we're gonna make it more pro. So check this out. So right here, I'm in my MPC software. I can hit F, and I'm in the file browser. I can hit X, I'm in the expansion browser. I can hit B, and now I'm in the media browser. Pretty simple way to get around, right? I'm gonna go to F first, and I wanna get uh, claps. And I wanna use some claps here, so I'm actually here, and this is the chromatic fire that machine has. So I'm using a, some samples from a different software. First thing I wanna do is make sure that I can see my project. So I'll come to here, I'll go to File Now, and then I want to make sure I got a brand new project, so nothing's in here at all. I'll come to here. I won't use demos. I'll come where it says empty project. I'll click on that. Empty project. We're blank. So now I want to load in some sounds to start building up this kit. So I know I want to have a clap, right? So I'm here in my little folders on top here. One, two, three, four, five. I'll come to here. Bam. I've got claps right here. I want to go to here. I want to get some claps, double click that, opens up, and I know I want to get this clap and that clap. No, that's too crazy. I don't need that right now. Okay, good. So I want this clap. So what I want to do now, I can drag the clap into here. I can double click that clap and it goes into my sample pool right there. And these claps are from machine, uh, from the machine library, which is called Chromatic Fire. I want to get those claps. Now, next, what I want to do is I want to go probably to my expansion browser. I'll just press X. And now I'm in my expansion browser. Next, I got some ideas here. As you can see, I got the soul thing already set up for us. I can click here on this RB soul and get this kit. Click on that kit. All those sounds loaded in here. But they also loaded here. <laughs> All there on top of this thing. I don't want to use all these sounds, right? Really? I just want to use some of these sounds. So what I'll tend to do, I'll grab a sound. As you can see, I'll grab a sound, move it somewhere. It's pretty cool. I can just get rid of sound that quickly on a pad bank. And now these sounds are gone. That's pretty cool. I like to also get rid of sounds, maybe keep a sound, but I will do that once in a while when I don't want to hear a sound. Take one sound, drag it to a bank, then drag it again, it'll erase that pad. Little trick that I do sometimes, kind of cool. So I got that going on. Next thing I want to do is I want to get uh, some more sounds. I want to get some trap sounds. So here I am in the MPC Beats producer kit, which is kind of cool. That's just one kit. But I've got expansions. So what I want to do right now is check out my expansions. So I come to here. Matter of fact, I'm going to press just B for the media browser. And now I'm in the media browser. Why I like the media browser is pretty simple. Everything's in here. If I don't select an expansion, I select one expansion, I only see what's in that particular expansion. If I deselect it, I see all the expansions, I see all the genres, I see the type, I see the instrument family. Pretty cool. So I may want to just go to like get trap, trap soul. Hit here, I get an idea of the trap soul kits. I may want to load these kids in. I want to hear how it sounds. Or this one. Or this one. I think I'll load this kid in here. I'm showing my order levels right here. The kids are too loud, right? I can stop it right here. Click that one time I stop it, it just stops totally. So I'm gonna load this kit in. Double click it. I've got a huge sample library here now. A lot of sounds I wanna check out, see if I can use them. Notice too, if they're in a the library and I do select these sounds, I don't get to hear them back. I need to take a sound and say, for example, I'm looking for a snare drum, the snare drum right here I might use. I'll drag the snare drum to say right here. Don't like that snare drum, right? I'll drag another snare drum. 
Mike used that one. So I can drag sounds directly to a pad to help create this kit, which is pretty cool, of course, always. So I want to build my kit up and collection inside the kit and get all the sounds together. So now what I want to do is probably double click this and go back to here. I double click that right one time, a second time, and now I'm back to seeing programs. I can also see samples here too as well. I can search out samples. I come to here, I want to look at 808. And now I can see a bunch of 808 stuff happening right here. I may want to get to an 808 snare. I don't even know what that sounds like, so I'm pull this up a little more. Oh. Oh, I like these right here. So I'm going to take this one right here. This one too. This one too. This one too. This one too. I got a bunch of sounds. Let's see. 808 um, Tom. Get that one too. And 808 Mid Tom. That's good too. And I think I'm good here. And maybe one more. Ooh, like that one. That hi-hat. So now I've got even more sounds, which is kind of cool. I did a search. I got those sounds from a search. Now that's how I got my samples in my sample pool, which is right here. And next what I want to do is create a program. So the program will be my kit. So this is the program here, right? So that's my program. We see the other programs are already loaded in here, but this first one appears automatically inside of the software. Now before I start, I prefer to do one thing. I've got to have a color for my pads. I want to hit a pad, I want to make sure I know that that pad, that color matches my system. I like to maybe have red for the kick drum, blue for the snare. I may use yellow for the hi-hats, orange for the tom-toms, cowbells may be purple, but develop your color system so that way whenever you look at the pad, you know what it is. This way you'll always be on time, plus it's so easy to remember once you have your own color system. Now, once I'm through using my media browser, I'm going to close it up. So I'll hit B again. And now it's closed up. I got a much wider view here. As you can see, I've already loaded samples in and sort of changed them around. So you'll see here I've got, of course, Clave up here, which is like blue now. These are all orange. All my Hyatt's are orange here, which is kind of cool. Next, what I want to do here is show you this right here. But I, I've got a sound here. This doesn't belong here, so I want to make sure I change the color of this first of all. So to change colors of your pads, it's simple. You want to go to edit, we want to go to program, and we're going to go to pad color. I go to pad color, you'll get this dialog box that appears right here for pad color. And what I want to do is change this color right here. So I'm going to come in here and make this color purple. That's the color of that pad now. I'll just close this out. And now I have a purple color for this pad. I may want to add something else there, put something different there totally. So I may just do that first of all and look for something I think I'm going to use. We're looking on here for something I like that I think I loaded in here. And you really can't hear anything, of course, once you come here. All I can do is look at it and select it and see what I've got there for it. So I'm going to pick up this, grab this here. Okay, good. Got that right there. So now you can see my colors match. Hi-hats, snare drums, and bass drums. Now what I also do to make this Pro K really work, I've already done some stuff, you'll check it out. What I want to do now is go to Program. So when I have a kit, I don't just use the samples that come with the machine. I mean, that's kind of cool, that come with the MPC. I just don't use the samples that come with the MPC. I sort of create my own sound. I don't like people having my sound, you know? I wanna make sure my sound is my sound, not yours. So it's pretty simple to do this. I'll come here, you'll see it's, now it's green. See that? I hit a sound, it's green. I'm in program right here at the very top. You see it says program edit or command three. I can get to that window. So here, I select the sound, it becomes green, and now I'm working with that sound. You'll see here, of course, I can change and increase the level of the pad, right? I'll move this up. It's louder. I'll bring it down. It's softer, right? And this is the program I'm making. So I'm making a brand new program. I've got this one drum sound here, but notice I have two sounds. I can have up to four sounds to layer those sounds to create a sound I like. For example here, I'll turn the level down. Okay, turn it down. 
but that's the first sound. My second sound is this 808 underneath it. See that? I got another sound right there. So I have these two sounds I'm using. And I can just slide across here, move my mouse here, and just slide over to the next part of my program. Notice here in the program we have global. This means everything will affect the entire program. I can change the pitch, I can fine tune, I can make it all poly or mono. Here we have pad. The selected pad, the level of that simple pad right here, this pad right here. I can change it to be uh, left or I can make it right. So I want to make sure this is center. I can do that in the mixing anytime I want to do it. I can have a simultaneous play. I can say, okay, I want this pad to play at the same time as a separate sample I may add. So let's say, for example, I come back over to here. I'm going back to home again now, and I want to put another bass drum, let's say, right here. Right? So I'm going to take a bass drum, find a bass drum, first of all. I'm going to find one I could use, maybe. Let's see what we got here. That's a snare. And we're looking for a kicks here. Here we go. There's a kick right here. This kick. Let's put this kick right over here. Take that kick. That kick might work. I'll come back to program right here. And now I'm going to hit this drum here. And I want to use that kick that's on that pad, right? So as you can see here, once I select here, it says none. But I can select anything that's sort of like in that sample pool. As you can see right here. So I can select different kicks. So the one I'm looking for, this is the one that's already being used, right? And so looking for a different one. And then I'll find a different kick. So this is kit one. And we're going to try to use this one with it. Right here. That's a clap. I can put a clap on there too as well. But in my case, I'm looking for a kick. And there's another kick right over here. Here's the kick right here. This is the kick right here. I'm going to simultaneously play this one. Boom. And now, got a nice sound there, right? I may want to bring the 808 down some. Right? Or bring it up either way. Or pan it differently. But you can see, I have three sounds now. So I'm really building a kit here. That's one sound for that snare. A different sound here. Now the other sound is kind of weird, right? So I'll come to here. I'll turn this down. I'll play it back. That sound on top has that sound. This sound. I'll bring this sound up a little bit higher than that sound. I may not want that sound. I can always change this sound. I can come to here and change it to a different snare. Maybe this one. I like that snare there. Okay, cool. I'm just using my mouse now to click that. I can also maybe add a few more things here. I can come to here. I may want to, let's see. I may want to change this envelope feel right here. For the envelope right here, filter. So there are so many parameters that I can actually change and attenuate to change those sounds and give that kit a real dope sound to it, of course, as well. I can also, though, I can add drum effects. Here's type effects right here I can come up with. As you can see here, so I can add these effects directly on the chosen sample. So I'll build upon that, but that's how you build your own kit. And the professional level would be you want to go to program and sort of design that kit, add samples to it, and sort of change the pitch. So, or even just get rid of one sample, apply one or two or three samples, like you just saw me do. Building a kit is important to making a great beat.